And uh, with that, we'll go ahead and jump on into today's agenda. Today, we will be providing an introduction to the Office Connector product suite. We're going to be talking about the different pieces, the query versus the financials, as well as the write and import. Uh, we're going to begin the presentation today by going over a few overview slides, which we're, are going to provide some real context to the software we're going to be looking at. But I do want to spend the majority of the time working within the software here today. Uh, we're going to first look at some of the pre-built templates that come right out of the box. Um, so you can be successful using this tool as soon as it's been installed. <clears throat> We're then going to kind of talk about the differences between a standard versus a designer license and why you might go for one over the other. And uh, we will reserve some time at the end for question and answer. But as I mentioned, uh, Tony Mary is monitoring the question section. So if you're on the live presentation today, uh, please feel free to submit those questions. And so I do like to start off with the question, you know, what is Sage Office Connector? Uh, well, Sage Office Connector, first and foremost, um, is an add-in for Microsoft Excel. It's a way that we can transform the way that we use Excel to help us extend our data management, analysis, and reporting capabilities. It is a very powerful time-saving tool, and it's going to allow you to work with your Sage data in a way that you probably haven't uh, worked with before. And so as I mentioned before, there are a few different pieces to the Office Connector product suite. And the first thing that we're going to talk about today will be the query module. If you look at this slide, you'll see your Sage 300 uh, construction and real estate uh, system there on the bottom. And at the top of this slide, you'll see a Microsoft Excel workbook. And so with the query capabilities, what we're doing is we're pulling information from 300 CRE into Microsoft Excel. But we can also use Excel as more of a data entry screen using the writing capabilities. And we can also use Excel to help us format import files. Now, as I mentioned, there is one more piece to this equation, that is the financials. And as you can see here, it's more of an extension of the query module. And so that often brings up the question, what's the difference between query and financials? I've got a couple slides on that next, but the main difference is that query pulls the details into Excel, and financials will help us derive financial outputs. And so um, the first thing I wanted to talk about, and when we jump into the software, we're going to talk about the Office Connector Query Designer. If you've ever built reports, uh, perhaps in the built-in report designer within Sage or other reports, um, then you're probably familiar with uh, the difficulty of you know, getting that report to look just right. Well, with the Query Designer, we're going to provide you the ability to intuitively evolve a report, picking the information you want from the Sage database. The financials component is going to extend your reporting capabilities beyond what the native financial uh, statements designer within Sage is capable of. We can easily combine your multiple entities and run financials for multiple data folders if you have that, if you have that need. And so today we are focused on Sage reporting. And Sage offers a few different options for reporting already. And as you may be aware, you can design reports within the built-in report designer. You can edit reports that come with the system and design your own. You can also create and edit inquiries within Sage. And one benefit to an inquiry is that it comes with that drill down capability. You, we are able to see the specific information you want, and then with the drill down, we can drill into the specific information. And with Crystal Reports, you also have that drill down capability, but if you've ever tried to learn Crystal Reports like I have, um, there is a really steep learning curve to that tool and other uh, reporting platforms out there. And you really have to understand what you're going to finish with before you get started. But with Sage Office Connector, what we're going to be doing is we're going to leverage a tool that you're probably already familiar with, with Microsoft Excel. And we are going to use Office Connector to simplify the understanding of your Sage data. When it comes to the Sage database, uh, 300 CRE 
is a great ERP solution that houses your data in a secured environment, allowing you to perform different functions on the data while still maintaining the integrity. Data that's saved in a relational database is typically stored in tables, like the ones you see here on the left-hand side, and this is where your data resides. So when you perform an activity in Sage, such as paying a bill or invoicing a customer, the data on these tables will be updated accordingly. Now the data flow diagram on the right-hand side shows some of the Sage modules and how they might interact with one another. For example, look at the bottom of that slide. The accounts receivable invoices are generated from the billing module. And then when those invoices are paid upon, it'll update the general ledger as well as the other modules. The real beauty in 300 CRE, in my opinion, lies within the flow of the relational database. And so when we talk about reporting in Excel, it is important to clarify the technology that you're using. Now, you do have the ability to export a report into Excel today, but that is not what we are talking about. What we are talking about today is much more sophisticated. And the disadvantage with that previous example is that if you export the information from Sage, that, those details are static which means that if any changes or formulas you add to that workbook, you're gonna to have to redo all that work when you export that information again. But with Sage Office Connector, we are going to make Excel an extension of your Sage technology. You are literally creating a customized report that needs to be created once and then refreshing that data as needed. Now that's just the query component of Sage Office Connector here today. We're also going to touch on the write and import features within Sage Office Connector here as well today. And so when we talk about data entry or getting information into Sage, it can be a very tedious task. And when you were taught how to use the program, you were probably taught by your consultant how to use the data entry forms there that you see on the left-hand side. This is how the original developers envisioned people would be using the program. Um, and this works um, you know, at the beginning. But when we start talking about managing large data sets, that tedious task can become a daunting task. And to manage large data sets, we can leverage the import programs within Sage. Perhaps some of you are importing invoices or importing commitments today. But most of the frustrations around importing a document is formatting the CSV file properly. Another option for data entry is to write using the ODBC drivers. As a general rule, what you can write, you cannot import, and what you can import, you cannot write. However, there are a couple exceptions to that rule, but it's a fundamentally different technology there. And it is important to distinguish those differences between the importing and writing. Writing will allow you to replace information within Sage or maintain the data. Importing will allow you to create values or transactions within Sage. I have one more slide here on the differences before, between importing and writing. And we'll start on the bottom of this slide here. If you look at the import, we do that indirectly through a Sage import program. Office Connector is going to help us create the CSV text file required for a successful import. Writing is a fundamentally different technology where we are actually writing directly to the database using ODBC drivers. Now, some people get a little eerie when they hear about writing, but rest assured that you can only write to the values that Sage programmers say you can write to. So you can't necessarily mess up the database. However, you do want to use caution uh, when using the writing and importing capabilities. This last slide here just shows the different import types that are available uh, for 300 construction and real estate, whether you're importing invoices, budgets, commitments, or to miscellaneous worksheets. 
uh, we can do all of this with Sage Office Connector. And with that introduction, let's go ahead and jump on into the tool here today. And what you should be looking at currently is a blank Excel workbook. And um, this workbook here, you'll notice that I'm currently under the add-ins tab. And uh, the different buttons here are the different features and functions that are included with Sage Office Connector. We're gonna first take a look at some of the reports that come with the product, but just be aware that everything I'm about to show you today was created using the designer license. So you could reverse engineer and create the reports that I'm about to show you using the tools that come with the Office Connector designer. Now you're gonna get a shortcut on your desktop, but I went ahead and opened it up here for Sage Office Connector. You'll notice I have a few different tabs here, and we'll start underneath the Welcome tab. Here you'll see product information, um, updates when they're available, uh, knowledge base for, and documentation, all available at your fingertips. Something that you may not be aware of is that you actually get a starter pack available with your license of 300 construction and real estate. So if you went down to your little start icon and clicked search and searched for starter, if you have 300 CRE, chances are you also have the Office Connector starter. Um, there are also some tutorials here that will help you uh, get familiar with the product. And uh, there's lots of other information that's packed into, these, uh, into the website. Navigating to the reports tab, here we can see some of the reports that come with the product. These ones here are built to showcase the query functionality, as well as the ones at the bottom you'll notice have the write in front of them, and those are gonna be write-enabled workbooks. We also have import examples, as well as some financials that we're gonna be taking a look at here today. I went ahead and generated a workbook here today, and the first one we're gonna take a look at is a cash flow analysis by job. Now, for each of the reports that come off of the desktop, uh, we will provide you with an information page. And I would recommend reading this, and it is a best practice to include this with your uh, different workbooks. And you can see here the purpose of the report, but you really want to include a section on how someone's going to use the particular report. Well, this is a cash flow analysis report. So we're going to put in a cutoff date and a specific job and refresh the information to get a cash flow report. We can come up here and uh, notice how it does pull in the selected jobs. Uh, and you could add additional parameters using the designer if you just wanted certain jobs here. Notice how we have a cutoff date. You could do that as of today. But as I have some sample data, I'm running that as of uh, you know 2015 here. Notice that you can include graphical elements that will respond um, as you change the date ranges or if you change the companies. This is also reading the information right out of my Sage. So whatever's current um, as of right now. Looks like we, you know, we're a little cash flow negative and then started to rebound a little bit here in May. Now, one thing that is in a lot of Sage reports that's desirable is the ability to drill into the detail. Now, if you think of what that looks like from a design perspective, we're really creating a sub report that we can drill into. And Office Connector is no exception to being able to do drill down. Notice how I have another tab down here for details. And if you look, it's currently blank. There's no details in this report. So what we can do is double click these values and it's gonna pass parameters, including the date, the month, and the job to drill into the detail. So I can see where that 84,000 or 8399 uh, came into play. Here it looks like we had a cash receipt of about 200,000 and a bunch of disbursements here and uh, some payroll costs here as well. Um, you know, that payroll cost looks a little bit high. I'm not totally sure where all those details uh, are. So I'm gonna drill into this as well. And so what you'll notice is now I can drill into what that $50,000 makes up and I can see, you know, okay, we have some labor burden and labor here associated with asphalt or the different, uh, you know, codes that are associated with that job. And so that's just showing how we can not only pull details into uh, Excel, but then depending on what we select, uh, we can pull additional details from Sage. And that was 
we have different methods of doing that, but this way I can guarantee you it actually pulled the detail in as you select that. So it's actually reaching into Sage and then pulling in the detail um, as appropriate there. And so that's one example that I wanted to show you today, more of a cash flow report. Um, the next report that I wanted to highlight for you guys today is a uh, work in process report. Uh, just like the previous report, we have an information page here. And this one's very simple. Just click on the work in process and refresh the workbook. Now you can, there's a couple ways you can approach the refresh. You'll notice some of the reports I have will actually have a little button that says refresh. But what that's doing is triggering this little lightning bolt here under the add-ins tab. So if I click refresh right now, the first thing it'll have you do when you open up these workbooks is log into your Sage operator. Um, I've already opened a couple workbooks. I've already logged into my Sage account. And we do that to enforce ODBC security. Um, if you're not familiar with ODBC security, um, that's something you'll probably want to familiarize yourself with, uh, especially when using uh, these type of tools. Um, but for, that's why we log into the profile is to enforce that security. And next thing it's going to have us do is access the data folder. We do have the ability to do reports on multiple data folders if you're looking to do consolidations. Um, but what I'm going to do is select this data folder for today's example. And notice how it pulls in the jobs um, based on what I selected. Now, this report is from more of a job level, so I can see all of the jobs. I can see the contract amount, build amount, percent of that contract earned. Um, if you're looking at the percent of estimates spent, this is a calculation out of SAGE. But that might not be the actual percent earned on a job. And so what you might do is use a, a cost to complete report, which I'm going to show next, to help derive what the actual percent earned might be. So you could hand this off to the appropriate representative or you get the details back and say we want to change that. You know, we're not actually 38%. We're actually closer to 29%. So as you can see here, I no longer have a cost that's in, in excess of billings, but I've actually overbilled. And so, you know, we would use the, those details on the next progress billings. <clears throat> now, if you're looking to get information back into Sage, that's where you would bring in the import or the writing capabilities. And there is a work in process report just like this one that I showed you right here on the work on the worksheet that's write enabled. So you, we're not going to get into the details into write and import today. Uh, it's not within the scope today, but it, we do have uh, presentations recorded that go into that in much more detail. But just know that you can write to the work in, uh, to the job level as well as the cost code level. And uh, that segues well into the next report that I wanted to highlight here today, um, which is a job cost, cost to complete report. And so um, just like the previous examples, um, we're going to look and see how to use this report. Uh, we're going to click the admin worksheet, enter in a couple different parameters, and then refresh the report. If we come under the admin tab, notice how we can select a job and a cutoff date just like those other reports. And if I click refresh report, it's going to trigger that little lightning bolt there. And so I'll go ahead and do that now. What Office Connector is doing is reaching into your Sage database and pulling in the details based on the parameters that we had selected on this page. This report just has two parameters, but as you'll see when we go and get into the uh, query designer here um, in a few minutes, uh, you'll see that it's very simple to add a third, a fourth, or even a fifth parameter, just like you would uh, within your reports today. And so for this job, I have lots of cost codes and lots of estimates, and it's pulling details from all different places within job cost. Um, here you can see a list of my cost codes, and like the previous example, uh, you may want to hand this off to the appropriate project manager and have them fill in the cost to complete for each of the cost codes here. If you use different methods of forecasting, uh, you could definitely add in a column um, to provide a calculation, um, or perhaps you could you know, type details in. And so you can start to see how you could uh, type this in to get an over-under for at the cost code level. 
So similar to the previous report, however, this is you know, drilling in a step further um, at the job level. Now you may have noticed that there is another tab on all these reports that say sample values. If you wanna get started using this tool, but you don't wanna use it on your live data, um, I've had that request before, you can deploy a sample company within 300 CRE, and then these sample values will work with the version of Sage that you have. And so that's just something to keep aware of is that we do have uh, sample values that I'm working with today. And so um, the next thing I wanted to highlight today was going to be the query designer. And so um, everything I've shown you so far with the built-in reports, I've just been using a standard license, uh, which means that I can pull those details into Sage no problem, or into Excel no problem. But with the designer, we can start to create reports like that and determine where the values land on the page. And so I've, re I've created a couple reports before, and if you join some of the training classes, we'll give you some best practices on how to create these reports. Um, but what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna type in a, uh, a job number, or we'll go ahead and job, type in job name. And I also wanna highlight how we can leverage um, some features within, uh, within um, Excel today. So what I'm gonna do is create a data tab, and there's different strategies on how you might do this, um, but this is one that I've uh, become accustomed to. And what I'm going to do is start by running the query wizard. We'll pick our data source here today. And the first thing you're going to be met with is a list of all of the database tables that we can report on uh, for 300 construction and real estate. Notice how we have the file name here on the right hand side and the table name here on the left. Now, what I want to do first is pull in some data that I'm going to use in my report. And so I first wanna pull in all my job names and all my job numbers. So I'm gonna type in JC space J and it'll snap down to the job cost job table. I'm gonna go ahead and select next. And when you start designing reports, uh, you will need to start familiarizing yourself with the database. But if you've ever used the report designer, you see these internal names here? Um, those are essentially what you have to work with within Sage. But what we're giving you here are nice descriptions that you know label that to make it easier to understand. So I'm gonna pull in the job name and the job number today. And then we're gonna come back to conditions when I pull in another query. But it's essentially asking, do you wanna pull in all the jobs? or do you just wanna pull in some specific jobs? And I wanna pull them all in today, so I'm gonna select next. And here you have the opportunity to name your query or the table that it's gonna pull in. I'm gonna name mine uh, JC job, and I'm gonna pull this in as a table that can be refreshed with live data. Now you can pull this in as static information, but as I've shown in the examples, what we're doing here today is we are pulling in information, formatting it lots of different ways, and then being able to refresh that. And so I'm gonna leave that as a table that can be refreshed. So that way, if I ever added another job, it would add to this list right away. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually move this guy over here because I'm gonna show you a strategy um, that I like to use. And so we're gonna come back to this sheet here and under uh, this uh, B3 here, I only want someone to select a job if it's within Sage. So we can start to use uh, functions within uh, Microsoft Excel to accomplish that. One that you'll wanna familiarize yourself is with data validation. It, the benefit of data validation is that you can force an answer from a user. So I could come here and select a list, and I only want them to be able to select a job if it's in this list right here. So that way I can use the drop down and select something like the, you know, Clackamas Office Park. Now underneath here, 
um, because I want to be referencing a key field, I also want to put in a job number. But I want the job number to be whatever the person selects for that job. And so an easy way to do that is to use an equals VLOOKUP. And if you're not familiar with a VLOOKUP, um, that's a, it's a fairly simple function of Excel that will allow you to use a lookup value, such as a name, select a table of data that you're working with, select the column number that the field is you want to return. So this is going to be in the second column in the table. And then I want to do an exact match, so I'm going to type in false. I went ahead and ended my parentheses and clicked enter. And what you should return here, oh, I'd misspelled false. I can't walk and chew bubble gum at the same time. There we go. And so now you can see that it pulled in the job number there. And so all of that to set a parameter. So now if I change the job from, you know, Clackamas Office Park to Northwest Food Warehouse, I've got the job number following along with it. Uh, what we're going to do next is start to use the query designer once again. And we're going to go ahead and launch the Office Connector Query Wizard. Now, here we can start to use our imagination to what we want to report on those particular jobs. The example I've prepared for you guys today is going to be with regards to job cost commitments. So think of your purchase orders and subcontracts. So what we're going to do is select information from the job cost commitment table and select Next. Again, we're met with the columns or the fields on those tables. So I want to pull in the commitment number, the type, whether it's a PO or subcontract. And if you're not sure what these fields mean, we go a step further and provide a preview down here as well. So select the preview there. And oh, I need to uncheck these guys. If I uncheck those and hit preview, it'll show me all of the details on this table. So I can see if it's purchase order, the description, the vendor, and other details. So I'm going to pull in a handful of details here on the table. Uh, perhaps you want to know what the amount on that commitment was. Uh, perhaps you want to know uh, the amount that's been paid, uh, if any is being retained, versus what's invoiced. Um, that might be one example of what you're looking for from a job cost commitment. When we select Next, it's asking if we'd like to apply a condition. And remember how I skipped over this last time? Well, this time we are going to apply a condition. It's asking me if I want to pull in every single job cost commitment from that table, or if I'd like to select just some specific ones. And so as you can see here, I have all of the fields that are available on that table. So I could say I only want those from a particular vendor, or I only want those from a particular job. And you can start to add in multiple parameters. You'll see here I'm going to select today job equals. And what I could do is put in a literal value and say, you know what, I want to pull those in for this job. But with the power of Office Connector, we can actually reference a parameter. So what this is saying is put in a cell address. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use the value in that cell when we refresh the query. And so if you look here in the upper left-hand corner of my screen, you'll notice that my job number is in B4. Uh, you may be inquiring as to why I put dollar signs in front of the B and the 4. It's not necessary for this example, but it is a good practice. These are anchor fields. Um, and that's simply Excel syntax. So if you're familiar with Excel, then you know why I put the dollar signs there. Now I just added one parameter. You could add additional conditions. Uh, you can add and or or restrictions um, to, to those. And you can start to add multiple parameters that people could input. And you can start to intuitively evolve this report. But we're going to keep this fairly simple today. Again, we have the opportunity to name this query, and we're going to pull this in as information that can be refreshed with live da data. When I click Refresh, it pulls in all of the details from that table. But we can do more. You can select the table, and you can start to use Excel functions to um, 
format it. Come under the Home tab. Go ahead and add all borders, and then add a thick outside border to make the report pop. Come under the View tab and remove those pesky grid lines. Um, come over this data entry area here and go ahead and uh, make this cell the background highlighted so the user knows to enter details there. We could then use the uh, protection within Microsoft Excel so that uh, if we handed this off to someone, they could only update the fields that we determine. So um, this next thing that I'm going to show you is, a, is another function of Excel. You can select the table here right-click it, and come into the parameters. Now, Excel is smart, and it knows that this table is dependent on what's in B4. So what I'm going to do is make this table refresh automatically. So if, I, if B4 ever changes, it triggers the refresh. So we can then come from the Northwest Food Warehouse and, oh, I'll pick another job. How about the... Uh, it doesn't matter. I think I have some details for Fort Wayne's Officers Club. And notice how it updates the report appropriately. But you may be thinking to yourself, Marshall, I don't necessarily have all my vendor numbers memorized. Um, it's nice it has a vendor number here, but um, it'd be nice if we could pull in additional details. Well, it, that's very simple with Office Connector. As I mentioned before, we can start to intuitively evolve our report. What I've done here is went ahead and added in a, uh, I went ahead and added in a uh, column. And what we're going to do is come under the add-ins tab. And instead of using the query um, wizard, now we're going to use the function selector. So in addition to being able to use that query wizard and creating conditions, we also have several functions that come with the program, including the Office Connector drill down function. We provide lots of documentation as well as examples that you can use. And for today's example, I'm simply going to look up the vendor name. However, you may want to sum up the total of the uh, purchase orders or commitments. Or you may want to find the average of a certain value or count the number of POs. Uh, we have lots of different formulas available. Now this is asking me what table are you interested in? Well. I want to pull in details for the vendor. And so can you think of a table that has vendor details on it? Well, I'll tell you, it's going to be on the AP vendor table. Uh, one way to find that is to type in AP space V, and it'll snap to the appropriate table. We'll go ahead and select this table here today. And it's asking me for the key field. Hmm, what is the key field? Well, the key field, if you're not familiar with database lingo, is the unique identifier. And so the unique identifier for a vendor is the vendor number. And so I could simply type in a vendor number. But what I want to do is be able to uh, copy this formula down. So what I'm going to do is refer a cell. And I'm going to refer cell, whatever is in cell, G six. Uh, actually, I want the one below that, G7, for that first value. So we're going to type in um, dollar sign G7. Notice how I did not put a dollar sign in front of the seven. That's because I'm going to copy it down. We're going to select next. Now it's asking me, what do you want to pull in? Um, now, I, I'm pulling in the vendor name today. However, let's say you wanted more than the name. You wanted the city, state, address, and the phone number, and other contact details for that vendor. You could pull that into your report just as easily. We're going to select finish here today. And, uh, oops, you know what? I messed that up a little bit, but that's okay. Um, what I did is I should have tied it to this one here uh, and created a label. But the beauty in Office Connector is that if you mess up like that, like I did, what you can do is you can just come into this formula here, and you know what? I don't want that for G8. I want that one for G7. Enter. Copy that down there, and then just change that vendor name. I should have put the caption in. I sell a very similar product to this one. Um, it's called Liberty Reports, and little things like that are different. But I've, you watched how I could just identify it here 
look at the formula and correct it so that it's tied to the correct vendor number here. And so what I've shown you is that I've evolved the report um, intuitively. Um, you can do more using you know, Excel uh, formulas. So I could come here under the amount uh, and hit equals sum and then reference the table and then get a sum of those details. And then if the job ever changed to say, you know, back to you know, Clackamas Office Park, I have much more commitments, so I'll need to scroll down once that refreshes. But notice how the sum carries along with the table. And so you can start to get creative with how you use this product and design different reports. And so, as I mentioned, it's not within the scope of today's conversation to talk about writing and importing, um, but if you would also like to leverage Office Connector um, for using data entry, um, you can use one of the write-enabled workbooks, one of the import-enabled workbooks, or you can license the designer to create your own write reports and your own import reports. Now the last thing on the agenda today was to show a financial today and to help you understand a little bit of the difference between query and financials. Um, what we've done so far today is we've pulled information into Excel and I've shown you how to design those reports. But what we're doing with the financials is we are going to give it financial inputs and it's going to give us an output. And so there is, if you've ever worked with financials before, then you understand the level of arithmetic or math that's required to actually get your output. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to feed this uh, report um, a prefix selection, uh, the period type, uh, the physical year, the period, and the accounting method, um, and then refresh the data to populate some financials. Coming under the admin tab, you'll notice that we can consolidate all of our prefixes within Sage. Alternatively, we could report on a single prefix. But one thing about this report is that you can actually create a customized consolidation prefix list. So you could come over to this tab here and define your prefixes, uh, whatever we want, however we want to group them. Next thing we'll do is put in the posting period and uh, month. And if you have budgets, we can pull those in as well. And I believe my sample data here, I'm going to put in 2018 period 10. And we're going to refresh the data. What it's going to do next is it's going to pull in all the details. Uh, and then it's going to do some number crunching to produce a trial balance, balance sheet, and then a PL statement. One thing I'll point out while this is cooking is that some other options you have for all of these reports, if you come back under the admin tab, you can save this as values. And so what that means is that if you uh, wanted to like save a report for a certain month, you could just save it as values and then you can save the workbook and kind of break those connections from Sage. Um, apologies, I think my sample data is old, older than I thought. Again, I was working with another software just a minute ago. But as soon as this report loads, you will be able to see that not only do we populate these uh, different financial workbooks, but we also have the ability to drill into the detail with this particular report. Um, I, When I was learning how to use this product, um, I actually used this report here to reverse engineer the drill down, and that was that's one way that you can be successful with this tool, is to try to recreate some of these reports that come with the product. Notice how I have a balance and activity for each of my different accounts. You can come under the balance sheet and see your assets, liabilities, as well as equities from this screen here. If you wanted to look at a P&L statement, uh, we have that available as well. If you jump under any of these fields here, you'll notice a bunch of them have these little double chevrons next to them, and that indicates that you have the ability to drill into those values. And so what I'm going to do here is drill into my receivables because I want to see what makes up that 1.06 million. Here, for all of the prefixes that you determined, which I did it for all of them, and the account that you selected, 
and the accounting period that we're working with, we passed all of those parameters onto this sub-report. So here you can see all of the details um, on those particular transactions. Here at the bottom, again, we have some subtotals um, that sum up the details as well as the debits and credits there. And so those were all the reports that I had to show you all here today. And so um, we do have some time remaining to uh, provide some additional resources as well as address some questions. And so bear with me just a couple seconds while I do a couple clicks here on my end. The next thing I wanted to highlight here is the Office Connector product suite but from a slightly different view. Um, today we really took a look at the Office Connector query as well as uh, the financials there at the end. And we highlighted the standard and the designer capabilities. I did go over a couple slides on the writing and importing uh, for this product. And the standard is the ability to send the information into Sage. And the designer is the ability to determine where it goes. The import, you can buy just a particular feature. So if you're just looking to import you know, invoices, uh, for example, you can just buy that feature. But with the import designer, you get access to create CSV files for all of those different areas. Um, I do have a good demonstration on the import that I'd be happy to share with you guys if you're curious, um, as well as the right. This slide here talks again about how the financials components of Office Connector can go far beyond what the financial statements designer within Sage is capable of. We can not only roll back you know, 25 periods, but we can go further than that. And we can look forward and do projections up to six months in the future. We can consolidate companies that have different period ending dates by aligning those within Excel. We can drill into detail as was demonstrated today and as with the first report I showed you today, we can include graphs, charts, and we can use the many functions of Excel, such as a pivot table, to drill into those details. We do have professional services offerings available as well. So if you have a custom project that you would like some help with, uh, we'd be happy to scope out what that might look like. Uh, we also have one-on-one -on -one consulting available, and so you can contact us with our professional services to get more information. Uh, we do also have training classes that are available uh, for you to take advantage of. And so if you would like more information on any of that, I want you to feel free to reach out to either myself or Tony Mary at Ethos Systems. Um, I will leave this contact information up here for a few more minutes uh, while we get into those question sections. Um, but go ahead and take a screenshot of this page and give Tony or myself a shout and we'll be happy to reach out. And that's just about everything that I had to show you all here today. Um, I guess we'll jump into the question sections here now. And I have not seen any questions post in the chat box that I wasn't able to answer at this point, Marshall. Okay, perfect, sounds good. Well, I'm happy to hang on for a couple more moments in the case that that changes. Um, but anything you'd like to add to the presentation thus far, Tony? Um, no, just as a closing statement, just as a general thank you for everybody for registering and attending today. And Marshall, as always, thank you so much for the presentation and Joni, all the hard work to coordinate this event. Um, yeah, um, I guess we can give some people some time back in their day. And Joni, did you have any closing comments? I'm good. Um, if anyone wants to unmute themselves and ask Marshall something, now's the time. I just have a quick question. When we're talking about the right functions, is there the ability to, I mean, what's the security for it so that you make sure that uh, things don't get overwritten that should be over, that should not be? Yeah, and that's an excellent question. Um, there's a few different strategies to making sure that, you know, the right security is in place. Um, if you go under the security administration within Sage 300 CRE, um, you'll want to be sure that you're setting ODBC security. Um, you know, whether you're talking about Office Connector or um, other tools such as Microsoft Access or, you know, other tools like that, um, those type of tools access the program through ODBC. And so um, if you don't want people adjusting those tables uh, in that regard, you'll want to make sure that all those are locked down. Um, the second thing that I'll say with regards to the Office Connector tool is that with the designer, you do have the ability to decide 
where um, you're updating information. Um, keep in mind, you can only update the fields that you know our Sage programmers deem appropriate. But the reason I mention it that way is because if there's other people in your company that you might be concerned about, you just do not give them access to the designer license. They only will have the standard license, so they will only update the fields that you deem appropriate. Um, alternatively, um, what I've seen other customers do is what they'll do is pull in a query of say, for example, all of my vendors, and I pull in all of the owners, I pull in all of the phone numbers, email address, and I hand it off to someone in my company and I say, I want you to verify that all of this is accurate, and in this column here, I want you to put in any new phone numbers or any new email addresses. Then they hand it back to you, and then you're the one that sends that into Sage. And so those are a couple strategies that I would advise uh, you take advantage of. Does that answer the question you had? Yes, it does. Thank you. Okay, great. Yeah, and ODBC it stands for Open Database Connectivity, and it's it's a fairly popular uh, way of connecting databases, uh, especially when talking about on-premise solutions. Yeah, if you guys joined us for the uh, presentation a couple days ago on the My Assistant module, um, I did a teaser um, about the My Communicator. Uh, My Communicator actually uses ODBC as well, and it connects instead of connecting Excel to your system, it connects Outlook to your system. So literally right from an Outlook email, using the My Communicator, you can update values within Sage using writing capabilities. So just be aware that this is not the only product that uses those ODBC connections as My Assistant and My Communicator leverage those as well. I guess we'll call it a wrap. Marshall, thank you so much for a great presentation. Yeah, thank you for your time, everyone. I appreciate you coming out. And thank you, Tony. Thank you. My pleasure as always. Thank you, Marshall. Thanks, Joni. Thanks, everybody.